Hello, it's your friendly neighborhood host, J.T. Wheatley, back again for another episode of the Classics, this time with It's a Bird by Stephen T. Siegel and uh, Teddy Christensen. This is a classic graphic novel released back in 2004 under the DC Vertical imprint that chronicles uh, Stephen C. Uh, Siegel's um, uh, offer when he's offered the job of writing Superman, only to originally turn it down as some personal uh, problems he has with Superman and his own family life comes to head. This is a great autobiographical word that really gets in the head of Superman of uh, writers and also how they really feel of Superman. How, as Siegel points out, he's perfect. He's, he thinks he's a fascist and so forth. But he really finds out that a lot of things he projects on Superman more has to do with his own personal life, as there's a as there's a family secret that keeps bubbling up. And it's matched beautifully by Teddy Christensen's gorgeous art, which won the 2005 Eisner for this painter. And that's and so you should, that's how good it is. It has a nice, almost watercolor feel to it that has a burst, nice personal touch. But also when he does the pick Superman in the various dream sequences, does a great job of really showing just how magnificent he really is. Yes, yeah, so all in all, this is a bit of a different kind of comic book, considering it's all autobiographical and about a comic book writer trying to debate whether or when he wants to write Superman or not. But it's still a great read regardless, has a great personal story, and it really makes you want to reread uh, Stephen T. Siegel's uh, run of Superman back when he was offered the job. So yeah, if you really want to get to a, a nice, uh, different blend of uh, comic book storytelling, check out the It's a Bird by Stephen T. Siegel and Teddy Christensen, because that honestly is now a true classic. And now it is March 11th, 2021, time for the favorite comic book of the week. Spectre and Spectres, number two, by Bowen McCurdy and Caitlin Musto, which finds the uh, ghost hunting crew uh, having to go to a local library to try to figure out what kind of a ghost is possessing uh, Astrid, which leads to some more spiritual hijinks, along with uh, some answers and some more questions, too. Once again, uh, McCurdy and uh, Musto do a great job adding the balancing both the humor and the scares in this uh, series, as, as with, of course, the idea of a TV ghost-busting uh, ghost hunter crew actually dealing with a real-life ghost. Well, real life, that's kind of weird, but nevertheless, and uh, how they mess with it. Like, one of the things that's really funny is the fact that they still are filming, even though their friend and host of the show is really possessed by a ghost at the moment. But they also draw in some drama, too, as Astrid appears to actually be in real danger now, especially a very haunting sequence at the end, which is, of course, done beautifully with the art by uh, McCurdy, who, even though it has kind of a cartoony style to it, there's some nice scares mixed in, too, especially there's a Nightwear sequence in the, in the end that's really creepy. So all in all, Spectre and Spectres has so far been hitting it out of the park with the first two issues, a great original series, and one of the better ones to come on the stands recently. So definitely check it out if you, if you have a chance to go to your local comic book store. And if you can, also, if you find it, uh, check out It's a Bird by Stephen T. Siegel and Ted Christensen, because that is a true classic. <laughs> 